And we're just going to crack on. So I'm going to hand over to our first speaker, who's going to tell us about their fantastic career. So this is Vicky. I'm not going to introduce them because they can introduce themselves because they're talking about their careers. Do you want to come this side? Or do you want to go that side? I'm going to have to give you the uh, pom pom. Right. <laughs> even, even though we've got a full morning session, we are potentially tight on time, as always. Right. I'm going to sit here. Okay, can people hear me? Is that loud enough? Yeah? No, okay. It's just for the right. course. Okay, so I suppose start with school. Is that where you want us to start? Yeah. Yeah, so very, very average student. GCSEs. Uh, my did all the standard English, math, science. My options were geography, which, yeah, was really useful, art, and what was CDT, woodworking. Um, so, I, you know, I, I liked history, I liked geography, but archaeology wasn't anything that I'd ever thought of. It wasn't really a, a career aspiration. Um, so I left school, went to do my A-levels, did geography again, um, did sociology and English. Um, again, all, you know, B's got, you know, decent, decent marks. And that was when I kind of thought, oh, archaeology. There was no option to do an archaeology A-level then, but um, I got really interested. So I signed up in the, the late, mid to late 1990s and started a combined degree in geography and archaeology. I lasted two years. I left at the end of my second year which, you know, is naughty. And I, I just wasn't ready for university. It was a lot of education. It was just a bit too much for me. And I wanted to, to work. So I got a job in a museum. That lasted a couple of years. I was always going to go back to uni, but it was always one of those, I just, laziness, maybe. I was too busy enjoying having money and having a job. But then I had a baby quite young and that really put a stopper on things. But what it also did was made me determine that I needed to, to, you know, what is it that I wanted to do? I need to sort myself out. So I put myself back through uni uh, when my boy was, you know, he was two years old when I went to uni. So I went to Manchester University and I did a degree in archaeology and I absolutely loved it. I was like, yes, this is the career for me. I'm not sure what direction I want to go in, but yeah, I love archaeology because I was still working, so I had a part-time job in a call centre, Ticketmaster. I was doing lots of volunteering. I was using all of my holidays, all of my sick time um, to sneakily go out and do digs, volunteering with uh, lots of local community groups. I carried on and did a PG dip in archaeological field practice. Um, and then things fell a little bit flat. Um, I found it really hard to get a job because I couldn't work away. So I was really restricted in what I could do. So I carried on volunteering. I was a prolific volunteer. I did anything and everything. And then one day, Salford Archaeology, who I did a lot of volunteering for, or uh, they were the uh, Centre for Applied Archaeology back then, there was an opportunity for a CIFA bursary in non-intrusive archaeological techniques. So it was DBA writing, historic building recording, and geophysical survey. And they basically just said to me, there is this opportunity, we think you should probably apply. I think people were getting sick of me just turning up as a volunteer, like, when are you going to get a job? So I applied and, I, you know, I was up against some, you know, pretty solid competition and people that I knew. So, you know, you didn't want to get your hopes up, but I got it. And it was a, a busy year. It was a small unit, which was really good because it meant that I got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. I wasn't just dumped and kind of left. And I worked with some really amazing people. So Mr. Brian Grimsditch, he's no longer with us. He taught me an awful lot um, and we had lots of fun. And at the end of it, they offered me a job. So that was, it was like, yes, my first professional job. And I was a bit older than most people. So I got my first proper contract. I was 30, which I was like playing catch up. Like there was a lot of people um, who were, you know, a lot younger than me. Uh, and kind of, I don't know, I got questioned a lot. I think when I moved to Salford, I started, the first job I got was a supervisor and I worked there for seven years. 
and I managed to get up to PM, which that's quite a quick move to go from supervisor to PO to PM. And I did get questioned, you know, some people thought, how did you get that? You know, how can you move up that quickly? But I worked really, really hard. I started doing the DBAs. Then I would do the building surveys as well. And then bit by bit, I, I used to help out on the site. So I'd never be running site works. I'd just go and help out if people were shorthanded. And Salford at the time did a lot of community archaeology and I'd come from that background and I really wanted to get involved. So I started assisting on, on the community projects. <clears throat> And that was my happy place. I absolutely loved it. I actually felt that I was achieving something. And I was very fortunate that I ended up running a lot of the community digs and I loved that job. But there comes a point in anyone's career where, you know, what am I getting from this now? Am I learning anything? And I was a bit of a sponge because I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go in. And community archaeology, while really enjoyable, there's not that many opportunities to kind of do it full time. So I wasn't quite sure. I was, am I happy? Am I not? I had a really good working relationship with the Greater Manchester planning archaeologist. And an opportunity came up in Cheshire. And he said, I think that you'd be a really good planning archaeologist. So I was like, mm, I don't really know anything about it. So I, I read into it. And I went for an interview, I got an interview. I went for an interview for the Cheshire Archaeological Advisory Service. And I was really honest with them. So I didn't go into the interview and say, yeah, I know all this. I was really honest that, you know, I was a beginner, but I was really keen to learn. And I got the job. And out of all my jobs, that's probably my favorite job. I got to work with Mark Lear, who is just, he's so knowledgeable. He's a really good people manager and he was really encouraging and I learned so much and I absolutely loved that job. I was like, this is, this is what I'm going to do for life. And he was gearing me up to take over when he retired and I was like, yep, that's me sorted. I found my niche. But then things happen, life changes. So my partner got cancer. I was living in rented accommodation. It was like, I need security. So... I decided, somebody suggested, again, it was, most of my jobs have been because people suggested I should go for something. I decided to become a consultant and I got a lot of flack for this. Gamekeeper turned poacher. Um, and it was a real big step. I was very nervous about it because being in local authority, I hadn't had, I had some quite bad experiences with consultants. And I was like, do I really want you know, it's, it's, it's a big change. Is that something that I want to do? But I, I'm always like a believer. Try it. Don't, you know, don't dismiss it straight away. Try it and, and then make your mind up. So I joined Mark McDonald in 20, end of 2018. And I lasted 12 months. I hated it. It was really hard. I was in an office on my own. So I didn't have the team, you know, it was a virtual team. Um, I found it really hard. It was really corporate. It was a, just such a different environment. And I just got huge imposter syndrome. And I really, really struggled. So I decided I can't, I can't stay. I need to go. And somebody suggested there was a job in Merseyside as the Merseyside planning archaeologist. So I was like, I'm, yeah. So I went for the interview and they were just like, yeah, yeah. When can you start? So I was like, yes. So I left after 12 months, feeling a bit like a failure. Um, and I joined Merseyside and I was like, yep, yeah, back, happy place. This is great. Uh, and then the pandemic hit and the council wasn't set up for home working. It was really difficult. So again, I had to make the decision. Can I work like this? I was traveling from Manchester to Liverpool, obviously public transport, you know, it was a bit of a no-no. Um, there wasn't, I, they didn't have laptops, so I couldn't work from home. Um, and I was like, I can't do this. So I rang Mott McDonald up and said, can I have my job? <laughs> and did the walk of shame, they were like, yes. And I did the walk of shame back in and had to explain myself why I left. But you know, I just think you've got to be really like, honest and you do what's best for you 
And it was probably the best decision that I made. And I've been at Mott McDonald ever since. Um, and I'm really happy now, weirdly. Um, I get to do some amazing things. I work on huge, big infrastructure projects, which in the commercial world, I just didn't get to experience. They're just so different. Um, and my experience being a community archaeologist, commercial archaeologist and curatorial, I think makes me a better consultant because I know how to deal with people. I just think all those experiences, whether they were mistakes, happy mistakes, bad mistakes, they've made me a better archaeologist. Um, and one of the things that consultancy gives you, obviously security, much better pay. It is really stressful. I am not gonna lie, you know, you earn that money. The amount of grief, one of my colleagues here, we are working on a particularly difficult project. And, you know, my job as I'm associate level now, so I went in a senior, I'm now associate. I'm the one who has to take the flack. I'm the one who has to deal with the really difficult clients or, or consultees. Um, and, you know, I'm the one that gets blamed for everything. But my experience, my customer service experience back before as an archaeologist, you know, all that's helped me. So, um, but one of the things that's happened since being at uh, Mott McDonald you get the opportunity to go on secondment with various different companies. And in 2021, the Environment Agency um, asked for some, they call them brought in service staff and it's a secondment. So it's a 12 month placement part time with the Environment Agency um, in their Midlands office covering a specific scheme, like a de developing a flood defence strategy um, within the Midlands. And I went for an interview, it was only one day a week and I got it. And then within six months, they asked me to interview for another secondment. So my job now, I work for Mott McDonald two days a week and I work for the Environment Agency three days a week. And I split my time between the Midlands office and the Northwest team. And I get to work on so many different projects, meet so many people. And I've managed to carve myself a little niche. I'm kind of like flood and coastal risk management person. If, you know, back when I first started in archaeology, that's not something that I would have said, yes, that's, that's what I want to do. I've just kind of fallen into my career path. And it's just because I've tried everything. And I think that was the key for me that worked. Like, give everything a go. If an opportunity comes up, try it. Don't, don't, don't knock it. So, yeah. So that's where I am now. I'm, my secondments with the Environment Agency have been renewed for another year. I'm quite happy where I am. I've got, for the first time in my career, I don't feel any pressure to do more. I don't, I'm quite happy at the level I am. I don't want to be more senior. I know some people in this room think I'm really ambitious, but I'm not, I just work really hard and I enjoy what I do. And I think if you love your job, you do work harder because it's, you know, you enjoy it. Um, but yeah, you know, I've got lots of people that I work with who want to be technical managers, but that's not, that's not my bag. I'm in a really good position. I get to do a lot of mentoring. So Mott McDonald, uh, we take on two graduates every year. So um, we go into universities and we give students. I'm not saying I'm particularly comfortable with the idea of a graduate consultant. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. And I work with some really good graduate consultants, but I just think having a little bit of commercial or just some of their experience after leaving university I think it just makes you a better consultant but that's just my personal opinion um, but yeah I get to do a lot of mentoring I support the graduates and I support a lot of junior staff as well and that's I like doing that so I've, I've just managed to consultancy has enabled me to build my little happy place so yeah it, we're not all bad <laughs> and that's it